Hi, this is Yash. I'll be presenting our cluster to conquer done in collaboration with Amashi Vastu, Luban Hassan, Dr. Christopher Maskalo, Dr. Sana Sayyid, and Dr. Donald Brown. I'll quickly walk you through what is unique about WSI image analysis in comparison to traditional image analysis, what are the traditionally used approach in WSI domain, our proposed approach, and our major takeaways. Here we can see two examples, one from ImageNet and another from WSI dataset. An average ImageNet image size is 500 cross 400 pixel, whereas a WSI can range from 50k cross 50k pixels to 100k cross 100k pixels, rendering traditionally used approaches unusable. Downsampling images lead to loss of relevant cellular and structural details pertinent for diagnosis. So for Tackling this problem, small patches are extracted from WSI of comparable size to ImageNet and are used for training deep learning models. Depending on the disease, proportion of patches containing disease can vary from 5% to 90%. So, for addressing this problem, authors use multi instance learning framework in which they assume at least one of the patches in a bag of unhealthy patient is unhealthy and all the patches in a bag of healthy patients are healthy. In past literature using this framework, authors have divided training in two parts. First part, consists of training a CNN for generating representation of the patches or prediction for the patches. Second part consists of aggregating these patch level representation or prediction to a WSI level prediction. But getting pixel level annotation for training first stage of model is an extensive task for medical experts. So we are not sure which patch in a WSI contain disease and which patch doesn't. Given that these pixel level annotations are not available for learning patch level embedding or prediction, in past literature either authors have either used a supervised framework with weak assumption that all the patches coming from a disease WSI contain evidence of disease which may not be true or an unsupervised framework like autoencoder which do not guarantee that discriminative features are being learned since the second stage has no control over the first leading to suboptimal solution. These limitations have increased the interest in end-to-end -end training using WSI in which both patch feature generation module and aggregation module is trained together in synergy. In this work, we have proposed end-to-end -end learning approach for WSI classification addressing this limitation of two-part training. Our proposed approach consists of cluster-based sampling technique for extracting diverse patches from WSI and we use these sample patches with adoptive attention pooling approach for training model. Why we use the sampling approach? We use it because we get more than 1000 plus patches from each WSI and for performing end-to-end -end training using all these patches is not possible. So we need a method to sample an acceptable batch size of patches from each WSI for training. So for, for this sampling part, we use clustering based approach. We hypothesize using cluster based sampling will lead to a better comparison of patches than top case sampling approach since it is iteratively picking up diverse areas from WSI for training. And we use local clustering instead of global clustering means we perform independent clustering for each WSI patches instead of common clustering for all the patches from all WSI as a global clustering approach is susceptible to creating clusters based on visual biases such as variation to staining or scanning procedure instead of medically relevant features. Now. Now once sampling is done, we use these patches for performing end-to-end -end training. During the epoch, we use a ResNet 18 model for generating patch representation followed by attention-based aggregation for aggregating patch level representation to obtain WSI level representation followed by a linear layer for WSI prediction. Cross entropy loss at the WSI level is used for performing training. To further stabilize the training and compensate for small WSI dataset, patch level loss is also included with weak assumption. Further, we include KL divergence loss between patches, attention weight and a uniform distribution to regularize the clustering mechanism and to penalize model if very different weights are allotted to patches coming from the same cluster resulting in better cluster quality. We experimented and demonstrated the performance of this architecture on two WSI dataset, one gastrointestinal dataset and one publicly available breast cancer chameleon 16 dataset. We observed that using an end-to-end -end training, we achieved higher performance accuracy in two-stage approach. Further, we observed that even with a weaker with a relatively weaker ResNet backbone that is ResNet 18 in our case, we are achieving higher accuracy than ResNet 34, ResNet 50 in two-stage approach. We attribute this to synergy between the aggregation and encoding module. In gastrointestinal dataset, the high importance patches highlight patterns deemed relevant by medical expert and our clustering step is able to group morphologically similar patches. These medical reviews are included in the appendix of our study. In Chameleon 16 dataset, we achieve a high ROC, high ROC UC of 0.91 nearing the full supervision performance and our high attentive patches overlap with tumor region segmentation maps. 
The performance would have ranked second on the classification portion of Chameleon 16 Challenge and seventh on the open leaderboard. All these approaches that would have done better than us would have used pixel level annotation for training. Using MNS back dataset and a simple CNN framework, Lean at 5 we demonstrate the value of including KL divergence loss in our approach. For this experiment, we generated bags of MNS numbers. We label the bag positive if it either contains contain 8 or 9 otherwise be labeled the back negative. Then for comparison of losses we trained Linear 5 to accurately classify the bag of MNS number with different combination of losses. We observed that inclusion of KL divergence loss regularized the high variance of attention distribution observed in similar positive instances. Without KL divergence loss attention weight Weights for positive instance classes 8 and 9 were highly variable in different bags. We observed that by including KL divergence loss, attention weights become more uniform for both the positive instance classes, hence achieving our objective of giving equal importance to same cluster instance. So in this paper, we propose an end-to-end -end WSI classification framework using cluster-based sampling technique and adoptive attention module and KL divergence loss. We demonstrated strong pro performance of the pr proposed framework for two data set, C2C is able to achieve comparable performance to fully supervised method. More importantly, clusters with high attention, high attention maps in breast cancer overlap with pathologous annotated tumor areas. And top cluster of celiac disease match the patterns deemed important by medical experts for diagnosing celiac disease. Thank you for listening to our talk. Our code is open source. Feel free to reach out for any questions.